Good, good night, everyone. Welcome to the Whitehall Avenue Seventh Day Adventist Church Weekly Vesper Voice. It is that time when the publishing department in, invites you to acknowledge the beginning of our Father's call to come rest and worship as He renews our mind and body. Today's reading is taken from the book Mind, Character, Personality, Volume One, Chapter One. The study of the mind, its importance. To know the laws that govern mind and body. It is the duty of every person for, for his own sake and for the sake of humanity to inform himself in regard to the laws of life and consciously obey them. All need to become acquainted with that most wonderful of all organisms, the human body. They should understand the functions of the various organs and the dependence of one upon another for health action of all. They should study the influence of the mind upon the body and of the body upon the mind and the laws by which they are governed. Train and discipline the mind. No matter who you are, the Lord has blessed you with intellectual faculties capable of vast improvement. Cultivate your talents with persevering earnestness. Train and discipline the mind by study, by observation, by reflection. You cannot meet the mind of God unless you put to use every power. The mental faculties will strengthen and develop if you go to work in the fear of God in humility and with earnest prayer. A resolute purpose will accomplish wonders. Potential of the disciplined mind. Self-discipline must be practiced. An ordinary mind, well-disciplined, will accomplish more and higher work than will the most highly educated mind and the greatest talents without self-control. To deal with the mind's a paramount work. The future of society is indexed by the youth of today. In them we see the future teachers and lawyers and judges, the leaders and the people that determine the character and destiny of the nation. How important then the mission of those who are to form the habits and influence the lives of the rising generation. To deal with minds is the greatest work over committed, ever committed to men. The time of parents is too valuable to be spent in the gratification of appetite or in the pursuit of wealth or fashion. God has blessed, let me say that again. God has placed in their hands the precious youth not only to be fitted for a place of usefulness in this life, but to be prepared for the heavenly courts. Teacher's usefulness depends upon a trained mind. The teacher's usefulness depends not so much upon the actual amount of his acquirements as upon the standard at which he aims. The, the true teacher is not content with those thoughts an indolent mind or a loose memory. He constantly seeks higher attainments and better methods. His life is one of continual growth. In the work of such a teacher, there is a freshness, a quickening power that awakens and inspires his peoples. He will strive for the higher mental and moral excellence. To know oneself is a great knowledge. The teacher who rightly estimates himself will let God mold and discipline his mind. And he will acknowledge the source of his power. Self-knowledge leads to humility and to trust in God. But it does not take place if efforts... Let me read that sentence again. Self-knowledge leads to humility and to trust in God. But it does not take place of efforts for self-improvement. 
He who realizes his own deficiencies will spare no pains to reach the highest possible standard of physical, mental, and moral excellence. No one should have a part in the training of youth who is satisfied with a lower standard. Prepares for eternity. In all your work, you must do as the husbandman does in laboring for the fruits of the earth. Apparently, he throws away the seed, but buried in the soil, the seed germinates. The power of the living God gives it life and vitality, and there is seen the first blade, then the air, after that the full corn in the air. Mark 4, verses 28. Study is wonderful. Let me say this again. Study this wonderful process. Oh, there is so much to learn, so much to understand. If we improve our minds to the utmost of our ability, we shall through the eternal ages continue to study the ways and works of God to know more and more of him. Science of Christianity and the Mind. There is a science of Christianity to be mastered, a science as much deeper, broader, higher than any human science as the heavens are higher than the earth. The mind is to be disciplined, educated, trained, for men are to do service for God in ways that are not in harmony with inborn inclination. Often, the training and education of a lifetime must be discarded that one may become a learner in the school of Christ. The heart must be educated to become steadfast in God. Old and young are, are to form habits of thought. Let me read it again, sorry. Old and young are to form habits of thought that will enable them to resist temptation. They must learn to look upward. The principles of the word of God, principles that are high as heaven and that encompass eternity are to be understood in their bearing on the daily life. Every act, every word, every thought is to be in accord. Let me read it again. Every act, every word, every thought is to be in accord with those principles. Advancement only through conflict. No other science is equal to that which develops in the life of the student, the character of God. Those who become followers of Christ find that new motives of action are supplied, new thoughts arise and new actions must result, but they can make advancement only through conflict for there is an enemy who ever contends against them, presenting temptations to cause the soul to debt, to doubt and sin. There are hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil that must be overcome. Appetite and passion must be brought under the control of the Holy Spirit. There is no end to the warfare this side of eternity. Let me read it again. There is no end to the warfare this side of eternity. But while there are constant battles to fight, there are also precious victories to gain. And the triumph over self and sin is of more value than the mind can estimate. The duty of every Christian to develop mind. It is the duty of every Christian to acquire habits of order, thoroughness, and dispatch. There is no excuse for so slow bungling at work of any character. When one is always at work and the work is never done, it is because mind and heart are not put into labor. The one who is slow and who works at a disadvantage should realize that these are faults to be corrected. He needs to exercise his mind in planning how to use the time so as to secure the best results. By tact and method, 
some will accomplish as much in five hours as others would do in 10 hours. Some who are engaged in domestic labor are always at work, not because they have so much, so much to do, but because they do not plan so as to save time. By their slow, dilatory ways, they make much work out of every little. But all who will may overcome these fussy, lingering habits. In their work, let them have a finite aim. Decide how long a time, let me read it again. Decide how long a time is required for a given task and then bend every effort toward accomplishing the work in the given time. The exercise of the willpower will make the hands move deftly. Christ of Jacob's page 344. To train every power of mind and body. God has given to every human being a brain. He desires that it shall be used to his glory. We have none too much brain power or reasoning faculties. We are to educate and train every power of mind and body, the human mechanism that Christ has bought, in order that we may put it to the best possible use. We are to do, let me say it again. We are to do all we can to strengthen these powers, for God is pleased to have us become more and still efficient laborers with him. And that brings us to the end of this week's Vesper Voice reading. Guard the edges of this Sabbath, my friends, and see you in the sanctuary. Have a pleasant Sabbath.